Hi friends, it's Evelyn here with story time for you today and I'm sorry that we are not seeing each other in person but we are all helping out by staying home. So today I'm going to bring you story time from in my house. So to start with, let's get our hands out. I always tell people to my story time you have to remember to bring your hands and this time you probably brought them just from your own house so you didn't even have to remember to bring them anywhere. All right, let's get our rhythm going. Boing, boing, squeak. Boing, boing, squeak. There's a story in my house. It's been about a week. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it's been. I don't know. Where did it go? I want to hear it again. I look to my left. I look to my right, I look all around, it's still out of sight. I look on the ground and over my head, <gasps> shh, there's something in my bed. <gasps> Let's see what it is today. Oh my goodness, it's my friend, Snail. Hi, Snail. Oh, hello. Well, Snail, I am a little bit confused to see you because I didn't know why I was doing snail stories today, and so I didn't prepare any. Oh, no, that's okay. I just was, well, I'm just on a journey, see? I'm traveling right now, and I happened upon that bed, and I was sleepy, so I took a nap. Oh, okay. Well, that makes more sense, but the only problem is, Snail, we can't go anywhere right now. We have to stay in our houses to help out. Oh, oh, oh dear. Yeah, well that's okay. I know it's a little bit disappointing, you know, but it's all right. It can be fun to stay in your house because you know what? What? You can use your imagination to travel places. Oh, my imagination, how does that work? Well, if you think of something, then you could pretend that you were there doing it or you could pretend you were going someplace, like, um, uh, where would you like to go? Oh, well, I, I was going to go next door. Hmm, well, you could pretend you were going next door, or maybe we could think of, a, of somewhere further away, like um, space. Oh, yeah, space, that's a good one. Hey, where would you want to go at home if you're pretending? <gasps> That's a good idea. All right, well, I am gonna tell all stories about different journeys today, Snail. So do you want to sit and listen? Oh, yeah, I would. That sounds really great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, well, let's see, Snail. I'm just gonna put you right over here where you can listen well. So our first story today that is all about journeying is called Clever Jack Takes the Cake. This is from a book by Candace Fleming. I don't have the book here, but I'm gonna tell it to you. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack, and he lived with his mother in a little hut on the edge of a forest. He and his mother were very poor, but he was good and kind. And one day, what should happen but someone came to his house and that someone had a long scroll and he unrolled the scroll and he read doo, 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 doo. the princess is having a birthday party and all the children in the land are invited to her castle then the man rolled up the scroll and got on his horse and went back Jack thought, oh, this is going to be so much fun. I've never been to a birthday party before. Oh, but then he thought, what am I going to bring the princess for a present? I don't have any money to buy her anything. Hmm. Well, he thought and he was feeling a little bit down. But then he thought, I am a good baker. I know, I'll make her a cake. So he went and he traded some wheat to, well, he got some wheat and he made it into flour. And then he traded his one coin that he had, he gave to buy some milk. And then he gave the chicken some seeds in return for some eggs. 
And he got everything together. And then finally he went out and he found some strawberries because it was going to be a cake with frosting and strawberries. He stirred it all up, he baked it, he frosted it, he was so excited. He picked some walnuts and he used them to spell out happy birthday. And then he took his one candle and he put it on there. Oh. And then he put on nine more because the princess was turning 10 years old. So he started to go through the forest on his way and he took that cake with him. And while he went, he decided he would like to sing a little song. And so he sang this song and it went like this. Two layers of buttery cake, golden frosting that I did make, 10 candles to light the way, walnuts that spell happy birthday. But what makes me Oh, so Mary is that big, fat strawberry. He was so excited. He went along singing his song through the forest. But no sooner had he been singing that song when what should happen but a troll came along. And the troll said, you can't come through here. Jack said, but I have to. I'm taking this cake to the princess. And the troll said, I don't care. No one is getting through here. No way. Hmm. Well, what if, what if I give you half of the cake? Said Jack. Hmm. Okay, said the troll. So Jack took off the bottom part of that cake and he handed it to the troll. And the troll ate it up. <coughs> Mm, good cake. Okay, you can go. Well, Jack felt a little bit sad, but he still had most of the cake and it still looked really good. So on he went and he sang his song. One layer of golden cake, buttery frosting that I did make, 10 candles to light the way, walnuts that spell happy birthday. But what makes me Oh, so Mary is that big, fat strawberry. Well, Jack kept on walking when all of a sudden he heard a huge ruckus up in the trees. Caw, 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 caw. <gasps> a bunch of crows were up there and they came swooping down and ate some of the walnuts off of his cake. Oh, no, thought Jack. Oh, but he had to keep going. So off he went. His song was changing again, and it went like this now. One layer of golden cake, buttery frosting that I did make, 10 candles to light the way, walnuts that spell hap day. But what makes me oh so merry is that big, fat strawberry. As he was going through the forest, all of a sudden, whoosh, 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 a wind started to blow. And do you know what happened? It whoosh, blew all those candles out. Oh, no. Oh, well, Jack kept on going, and now his song sounded like this. One layer of golden cake, buttery frosting that I did make. No candles to light the way, walnuts that spell hap day. But what makes me oh so merry is that big, fat strawberry. Well, Jack kept on walking. He was almost to the edge of the forest now, and he knew once he got to the edge of the forest, then he would just be a few more paces until he got to the castle and the princess's birthday, and he was so excited because... Still, the cake was okay. It still would taste pretty good. But then, who should come up rah, 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 but a bear? And that bear was hungry. And that bear said, Am! and ate that cake. He ate the candles. He ate the walnuts. He ate everything except <laughs> he spat out the strawberry. I don't like strawberries, he said. And off he went. <laughs> 
Jack picked up the strawberry. It was pretty yucky because the bear had spat it out. But it was all he had, so he sort of tried to clean it off and, well, then he carried it. No layers of golden cake. No buttery frosting that I did make. No candles to light the way. No walnuts that spell hap day. But what makes me oh so merry is that big, fat strawberry. Well, Jack made it with his strawberry to the edge of the forest. He walked the rest of the way, and by the castle there was a long line of all the children waiting to give their presents to the princess. He got in line, and he waited while he heard the princess saying, Ugh, oh, rubies. Oh, diamonds. Oh, oh, this is boring. Hmm, thought Jack, that's strange, but he waited. And then he got to the guard, and the guard said, And what is your present for the princess? And Jack said, Well, I just have a strawberry. The guard said, Oh, don't you know the princess is allergic to strawberries? She can't eat that. And he snatched that strawberry right out of Jack's hand and ate it himself. Oh, no. Well, Jack got to the front of the line, and the princess was there looking very bored indeed. Jack said, I'm sorry. I, I didn't bring you anything. And he told her all about how he had traded for the eggs and the butter to make the cake and how he'd frosted it and how he had taken it through the forest. And he told her about how amazing it was going to be, but then how the troll stole half of it. And then the crow stole the walnuts and the wind blew out the candles and then the bear ate all the rest of it. And then the guard took the strawberry and I don't have anything, I'm sorry. The princess looked at him for a minute and then she burst out laughing. <gasps> Yay, she said, you brought me the best thing of all. You brought me a story, and there is nothing better than a story. Well, Jack was so relieved and happy, and from then on, he and the princess were best friends. The end. All right, good listening, everybody. Let's see. I have ten fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do stuff. Want to see? I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them quietly and sit just so. I can squeeze them tight. I can open them wide. I can fold them all together. I can make them all hide. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them quietly and sit just so. Well, our next story is one of my favorite books, and this is kind of a treat because usually at story time, um, I wouldn't be able to read this book because the pictures wouldn't quite be big enough, but here I can. This is called Julian is a Mermaid, and this is by Jessica Love. This is a boy named Julian, and this is his abuela, and those are some mermaids. Julian loves mermaids. Look at that beautiful fish that he's meeting, giving him a necklace. Vamanos, mijo. This is our stop. Abuela, did you see the mermaids? I saw them, mijo. Abuela, I am also a mermaid. Hmm. I'm going to take a bath. You be good.
Julian has a good idea. Hmm. Oh. Uh oh. Hmm. Come here, mijo. For me, Abuela? For you, Julian. Where are we going? You'll see, says Abuela. Mermaids, whispers Julian. Like you, mijo, let's join them. And they do. The end. Oh, I love that story. I think it's so lovely. Let's see. Let's get out our hands again. Two little red birds sitting on a hill. One named Jack, the other named Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Two little birds sitting on a hill. One named fast, the other named slow. Fly away fast, zoom! Fly away slow, do 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 do. Come back fast, zoom! Come back slow, do 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 do. Two little birds sitting on a hill. One named loud, the other named soft. Fly away loud, boom! Fly away, soft. Come back loud. Boom! Come back soft. Good job. All right. Let's now, for our last story, I think it might be time to tell a story about our friend Anansi. Now, some of you might remember Anansi because he is a spider who's a trickster. Anansi, would you like to say hello? No! You can't make me say hello! Well, that's true, but it would be nice if you would. No! I don't do nice! I just play tricks! <laughs> well, that is true about Anansi. He loves to play tricks. And one day, he thought to himself, <sighs> I'm hungry. I wish I had some melons to eat. But the problem was that in addition to liking to play tricks, Anansi's very lazy, so he never grows his own food. He decided he would go to Elephant's house because Elephant does, and Elephant grows really good melons. Anansi went over and knocked on the door. Bang, 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 bang. Elephant, are you home? Are you home? Nobody was home. Ah, perfect, said Anansi. And he creepy crawled in to Elephant's yard and started eating. He ate and ate and ate. He ate so much. He ate into the whole inside of a melon. Ah, soon he was full and happy. But then when he tried to get out of the melon, mm, mm, he was stuck. He couldn't get out. All that melon had made him big, big, big. And he'd gotten stuck inside that melon. <clears throat> but then he thought, wow, this would be a good way to play a trick on elephant. 
Mm, mm Mm-hmm. Soon, Elephant came home. Oh, I think I'll have a melon to eat, said Elephant. And he reached down with his trunk to get one when the melon, which had a Nancy inside of it, said, Hey, don't eat me. What? said Elephant. Yeah, I don't want to be eaten. But I, but you, what? I don't understand, said Elephant. I've never heard of a of a talking melon before. I didn't know you could talk. Oh, of course we can, said Anansi from In the Melon. We melons talk all the time. You just don't listen. Oh, said Elephant. Wow. Well, I have got to take this to the king. The king needs to see this melon. So he scooped up that melon with Anansi inside and started to carry it down the road. Doo-doom, doo-doom, doo-doom. Pretty soon, they saw Warthog. Warthog said, Hey, elephant, what are you doing? Where are you taking that melon? Well, I'm taking this melon to the king. Warthog said, Why? The king has plenty of melons. The king does not need your melon. Well, I, uh, this melon is very special because it can talk. What? said Wardog. That's ridiculous. I never heard of a talking melon. That's as silly as, that's as silly as, and Anansi from inside the melon said, That's as silly as a clean Warthog. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. Hey, said Wardog, I am clean. I took a bath last. month, yeah. Oh, said Elephant. Well, uh, mm, it was actually the melon that said that. I don't know if you're supposed to take a bath more than that, though, Warthog. Maybe you should. But anyway, that was the melon, see? Wow, it really is a talking melon, said Warthog. Can I come with you? Oh, sure, said Elephant. And off they went. Pretty soon, they saw their friend Giraffe. Giraffe was very proud of her long neck, and when she saw them, she said, Oh, hello, what are you doing? Elephant said, We are taking this melon to the king. Ha! That's preposterous! The king has plenty of melons, said Giraffe. Oh, not like this, said Elephant. This is a special talking melon. What? I never heard of anything. That's as preposterous as, as preposterous as, and Anansi said, as preposterous as a giraffe with a neck as short as yours. (laughs) What? said giraffe. I have a beautiful long neck. I can't believe you would say that. Oh, no, said Elephant. It wasn't me. It was the melon. See, I can talk. (gasps) Wow. Okay, I will come with you, said Giraffe. And off they went. Well, pretty soon they got to where the king was. Elephant bowed low. Your Majesty, I have brought you a gift. What have you brought me, said the king. And Elephant handed him the melon. I don't need this melon. I have plenty of melons. Are you saying you think you can grow better melons than I can? Because you cannot, said the king, who was very bad-tempered indeed. Oh, no, I don't think I can grow better melons, but I did grow this one, and it's a talking melon, and I just thought it was so fantastic that you should have it. What? A talking melon? That's ridiculous. I've never heard of such a thing. Impossible! Elephant said, oh, but it's true, it can talk. He said to the melon, now, melon, don't be shy. Say something to the king. But do you think Anansi said anything? Nope, he stayed in that melon, as quiet as could be. Hmm, said the king. Melon, I command you to talk. And Anansi. Hmm, melon, this is getting ridiculous. Yeah!
stop,' said the king, stomping his hands. "'I should have known. I can't believe this. You are what a... Oh, this melon! You are not a special melon. You are just... Oh, this is just ridiculous. This is so silly!' And finally, Anansi said from within the melon, Ha! You think I'm silly? You're the one screaming at a melon! Ha! Ha! <gasps> oh no, said Elephant. A melon insulted the king. And the king said, Oh, that's it! And he kicked that melon, and Anansi and the melon flew all the way back to Elephant's house, where, bam, they landed hard. The melon broke open, and Anansi ran out and up into a banana tree. Well, Elephant came home and he said to those melons, Melons, I can't believe you. I'm never trusting one of you again because you made a fool of me in front of the king. Hmm. And from up in the banana tree, Anansi, pretending to be a banana sa now, said, Yeah, you can never trust a talking melon. We bananas could have told you that. Hee <laughs> The end. All right. Well, you guys have been such great listeners, and I hope that everybody is doing well out there, and keep tuning in for story time here. Um, we miss seeing all of you in person, but it's really fun to be able to see you like this. And I have got my limber jack. It's going to be a little bit different because I can't quite do it with the paddle. So she's just going to dance next to me. And then I was thinking that maybe this little ADL unicorn would also like to dance. So you guys know how it goes. You start sitting down. And then when you hear the words knees up, you can pop up. All right. You can watch them if you're not sure. There was a girl from France who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that she could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Sit back down. Well, Unicorn has got a horn, and that makes him very happy. Too happy to find a rhyme. The only other thing that they can do is knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Yay! Well, I would just like to say thanks for listening to story time today. The only other thing that we can do is knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. <gasps> Faster! Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Woo! Ah. Wiggle, wiggle fingers right up to the sky. Wiggle, wiggle fingers. Wave them all goodbye. Thank you for listening to Storytime, and we'll see you soon. Bye.